Last time, we knew a high sensitivity and low power sampler is a must for high speed studies. In this video, we are narrowing down the topology for such a sampler, which is a strong arm ledge competitor, and it is also called a sense amplifier or slicer, since it's been widely used in the integral to digital conversion, memory sensing, and slicer circuit. First of all, a high sensitivity means a small input swing can be converted to a real to real output swing, and that's equivalent to a very high voltage gain. So, how do we achieve a very high voltage gain and low power at a high speed at the same time? That's very difficult to achieve with a normal angle amplifier. Think about a positive feedback images for 5 seconds. Correct. The traditional linear amplifier must be a trade off between the gain and the bandwidth. To achieve a high gain along with a high bandwidth, the power is always too high. Therefore, positive feedback to regenerate the signal level could potentially provide a much more voltage gain without burning high power for a high speed requirement. We could apply a CMOS static ledge as the regenerated amplifier. If we can somehow inject it a small differential input coupled into the latch, then the regression will pull one output node to the supply rail and the other node to the ground rail. Think about the switching images for 5 seconds. Right. We can simply add the two switches to inject or sense the differential input swing into the CMOS static ledge. Also, both inputs will have a capacitive load for those two nodes that have set to their initial state, such that the ledge could amplify the applied differential voltage. Also, intuitively from the microelectronic 101, the impedance of the cross couple pair is minus 1 over Gn. Therefore, the time constant of the regression of the positive experience is C over Gm, which means the passive capacitance must be reduced to improve the regression speed, since both the Gm and the device capacitance are all proportional to the device size. Increasing the device size may not reduce the regression time effectively due to the self-loading on the device capacitance. Unfortunately, there is one subtlety in the ledge here. Think about the memory images for 5 seconds. Bingo! The memory effect of the regression amplifier will keep at the last resolved state forever. If there is no strong inject input to free over the state, therefore, that will not work if we don't add any reset mechanism such that the ledge would clear out the memory. To implement the reset, think about the switching images for 5 seconds. Right. We could simply add a switch to either short the differential output together over some well defined supply or ground level before injecting the differential input as the next amplification state. Alright, now we have all the puzzles in understanding that the regression amplifier will not only need differential sensing and regression states, but also the reset phase. Therefore, we need a mechanism to control it. Think about a clock images for 5 seconds. Exactly. Adding a clock for all the operation phases is a must. But how do we control 3 operation phases? Sensing, regression, and reset? Right. We could do the multi-phase clocking to control the ledge properly. But that complicate the clocking path, which would contribute lots of power overhead, even though we save lots of power on the regression amplifier. What's the simplest clocking you could have, but more than one phase? Correct. Single phase clock, but having 
two control phase by the rising edge and falling edge phases. For example, the clock's rising edge would enable the input to start to sense the tiny differential swing. Right after a short period of time, the latch will enter the rejection phase while the clock is at the pier of large one. Lastly, at the clock's falling edge, the latch would disable the rejection phase and enter to the reset phase and wait for the next rising edge. According to our latch image, think about the strong arm latch should look like for 5 seconds. Bingo! The topology of a strong arm latch compared from scratch was not that difficult, right? First, the sensing device should be a differential pair, M12, at the input, and to make sure the sensing phase is right after the clock's rising edge, we should just put a tail device M10 underneath as a switch, which will also disable the input sensing while the clock is low. After the sensing period, the latch should enter the rejection time. Therefore, the cross couple inverter M3456 should be on top of the differential pair M12, such that the rejection phase will disable the input sensing and mainly regenerate the output to real to real levels. At the clock's falling edge and logical result, the M7 and M6 reset device will put the output to VDD, and M9 will also show the source of M3 and M4 to remove the memory effect of the previous resolved output levels. Someone may split the M9 into two devices and show both source of M3 and M4 to VDE as well, which may depend on how the floor plan reduces the plastic capacitance and the time constant. After coming up with the topology of a strong arm bridge competitor, think about the operation images versus time for 5 seconds. Right, first, the clock is low and both the output nodes are shorted to VDD. Second, during the clock rising edge and the short time of delay, the input sends the positive pass while all reset devices are turned off. Third, then both output levels are dropped together and VR plus will keep dropping down to the ground since the M1 sends more current while the VR minus will return to VDD since the M2 sends less current. Fourth, the falling edge of the clock will keep the VR minus at the VDD while the VR plus start to charge up to the VDD, which would take time. Alright, we already understand the topology and operation of the strong arm ledge competitor. Let's think about its advantage images for 5 seconds and see if that means what you want in most of the circuit applications. Great! First and foremost, a strong arm ledge competitor consumes zero static power dissipation. But why? First, Starting at the reset phase, the clock is low and the tail switch is open to break the current path to the ground. Second, during the input sense phase, all the drains of the PMOS M567A are still turned off to break the current path to VDE. Third, then both the upper level are rejected to almost real-to-real -real level and the latches will be turned off to cut both VDD and ground path without any DC current. Therefore, the most attractive image of the zero DC current makes the strong arm ledge scale power with the data rate as well as the CMOS logic. What's next? Think about the output swing images for 5 seconds. Obviously, the output swing of a strong arm ledge is real to real, which makes it compatible with the following digital CMOS logic easy. Therefore, a tiny input analog swing was converted to the real-to-real -real digital level, which makes the strong arm ledge 
commonly used in algo to digital converter, sense amplifier, flip-flop circuits as the sampler. What are the remaining good features? Think about the input images for 5 seconds. Great. The input differential pair is like a CML circuit to have a high input impedance. Therefore, any preamplifier connected to it will not consume as much power as others. In addition, unlike other CML buffers or CTOs, the input of same mismatch is only dominated by the input differential pair, which makes the design easy. Again, the reset device won't affect the input random mismatch, and the high gain of the latch will contribute to a very low input refer offset. Therefore, it will help another elegant way of performing the DC offset cancellation at the input stage of the strong arm latch such that the speed can be increased while keeping the power low enough. Here are the summarized images of why we need a strong arm latch compactor, sense amplifier, or slicer. We start with a positive feedback rejection idea of coming up with a simple latch from scratch such that we could convert a tiny and fast input swing to a rail to rail swing without burning more power. In addition, to remove the memory effect of the latch, we also add a reset idea but keep a single phase clocking without adding any clock power. Therefore, to fulfill the three phases reset, sensing, regression, we must add a clock control switch at the tail of the input sensing differential pair and stack the latch on top of the differential pair. The remaining three set switches are connected at the output and the drain of the input differential pair. The detail of the topology and operation of the strong arm latch was described. From these images, we know that three phases operate sequentially without DC path. Therefore, the first advantage is no static current, and the power could scale well with a data array as other digital CMOS circuit with CVF current, which beats the CML latch static DC current a lot. Second, the output swing of the strong arm latch is real to real, which makes it compatible with the following digital CMOS logic also. So, it's commonly used in ADC, memory, studies, etc. Third, the high input impedance reduces the preamp's loading and power. Fourth, the input offset is dominated by the input differential pair, and the DC offset calibration or cancellation at the input stages may not degrade operation speed too much while keeping a low power. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback. I appreciate your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.